and welcome to Teacher Gimbel's channel. This is part two of two parts that go over the Illustrative Math Algebra 1 Unit 2 Lesson 1 problem set. If you want to see the beginning of the lesson and the first two problems, go ahead and look for the part one video linked below. Let's get started on this question. Problem three. Each of the 10 students in the baking club made two chocolate cakes for our fundraiser. Immediately looking at this question, I identify that for each student, there were two chocolate cakes made, so there was a total of 20 cakes made at the fundraiser. I personally like writing down information as I get it. They all use the same recipe using C cups of flour in total. So total flour they used is equal to C. The question is asking us to write an expression that represents the amount of flour required for one cake. So if they had, let's go ahead and set a variable for this. The amount of flour required for one cake, we're gonna call it F. So they made 20 cakes. Each cake had F flour in it. If F is the amount of flour required for one cake, which makes the total amount of flour they used 20 cakes times F. We already know that the total flour is equal to C. Now we want an expression that represents the amount of flour required for one cake. So I'm gonna get the F by itself. So I'm gonna divide by 20, I'm gonna divide by 20, and that gives me with F is equal to C over 20. The amount of flour required in one cake is the total amount of flour we have divided by the 20 cakes that were made. Let's get going to the next question. Problem number four. A student club started a fundraising effort to support animal rescue organizations. The club sent an information flyer home to the end students in the school. It says, we welcome donations of any amount, including any change you could spare. Their goal is to raise T dollars and to donate to a cat shelter and a dog shelter. Match each quantity to an expression or an equation or an inequality that describes it. This is similar to the last question we did. Let's go ahead and identify our variables. Again, n is equal to the number of students and t equals money in dollars. We have to remember that. We're identifying our number in, number in dollars and not cents. Let's start matching. A says the dollar amount the club would have if they reached one fourth of their goal. Well, one fourth times our total goal, which is t, is equivalent to writing one fourth of t which matches with number five. I apologize. Let's make sure I'm plugged in correctly. That over there matches with five. I'm gonna write five next to my A. B says the dollar amount the club would have if every student at the school donated a quarter to the cause. I remember that one quarter is equal to one fourth of a dollar. The reason I have to do that is because, remember, our T is measured in dollars. So if every student had donated one quarter, they would all be donating one fourth of a dollar multiplied by the number of students that there is. That is matches. I notice here that I made a mistake in that five doesn't match. It's not one fourth N, five matches with one fourth T. Two matches with one fourth of T. We all make mistakes and it's important to see that you have to go back and fix your mistakes when you see it. That was just an error in me reading the answer choices. So one fourth N, that one matches with five. I'm circling these so I know which answers I've already used. C says the dollar amount the club could donate to the cat shelter if they reached their goal and gave a quarter of the donation to the dog shelter. So if the club the club could donate to the cat shelter if they reached their goal and gave a quarter to the donation. So if they reached their goal, they would have T dollars. But if they gave away a quarter of the total donation, we'd be having to subtract the total amount, which would be, we're gonna subtract one fourth of the total donation amount. We have to remember here that there's a hidden one in front of that t. If I say one t minus one fourth t, I'm gonna get three quarters t. So the amount that would have left is three quarters of the original amount, which is the answer that we see in number four. 
D says the dollar amount the club would still need to raise its goal after every student at the school donated a quarter. So if every student at the school donated one quarter, they would have one fourth N money. However, this question isn't asking how much they would raise if the students donated a quarter. It's asking for the dollar amount the club would still need, which means we're not going to use one fourth N. We're going to use T minus one fourth of N, which will give us the amount left that they need to raise. Amount left. We have to be really careful about the wording of the questions because a lot of these guys are very similar. Finally, let's go ahead to E. The dollar amount the club would have if three-fourths of the student each gave 50 cents. So if three-quarters of the students each gave 50 cents, and we're going to call this a half a dollar, that would give us the amount of money that was donated. One shows us that same form of expression, and so that is our answer for E. If you need some extra practice and you are watching this video first, I recommend you going back to the half part one, which has another example that's quite similar. Let's keep going. Problem number five. A softball team is ordering pizza to eat after their tournament. Yum. They plan to order cheese pizzas that cost $6 each and four toppings pizzas that cost $10 each. They order C cheese pizzas and F four topping pizzas. What is the expression that represents the total cost of all the pizzas they order? Well, if they order C, C cheese pizzas and the cheese pizzas cost $6 each, that's going to be the total cost of the cheese pizzas. We're going to have to add the cost of the four cheese pizzas, which are each $10. So we're going to say 10 times the number of four cheese pizzas they have represents the expression for this pizza. My answer is number C. Problem number six. The value of coins in the pockets of several students is recorded. What is the mean of this value? Oh my goodness, this is a lot of numbers. To find the mean, we have to add all of these numbers together. 35 plus 35. We're going to add 40 plus 45 plus 45 plus 50 plus 60. The next thing you're going to do is after you add those numbers together, we're going to remember that the line represents division. We're going to count up how many we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we are going to divide by the number there is. I haven't done the math for this problem, so I'm going to leave this to you to pop into a calculator and identify the correct answer on your own. Problem number seven. And this is going back to review from unit one. The dot plot displays the number of hits a baseball team made in several games. The distribution is skewed to the left. Remember, when we have skew, the skew is always where the tail is. And the tail is on the left side, which is why we're skewed to the left. If the game with three hits is considered to be recorded in error, so that's this game right here, they made a mistake, and if it removed from the data set, if that happens, what happens to the mean of the data? Well, when you remove an outlier, you are going to take the mean and you're going to shift it in the direction of most of the data, which means the mean will get bigger. This is because we're not including this very tiny amount when we're taking the average. What happens to the median of the data set? The median of the data set is going to fall out around 9. Even if we remove this value over here, the median might drop up one one data point, but it is not going to change. So the median will stay the same. If you would like to have the videos for this lesson, please post in the comments below, and I'll happily post for any lesson that you want the answers to. 